spiritual term for us. It's talking about a human being that has seen something and heard something that has changed their heart. And it has changed them to the point that they have now become a credible and unimpeachable witness for God. The warfare against God's agape love, His great law of agape love, must continue until God has a people that are willing to let Him write His promises, His ten promises, on their hearts. In other words, stop resisting God taking the initiative to do this. Satan, the master of deception, has had two great successes in 6,000 years. He succeeded in convincing a third of the population in heaven that God's law of agape love is unjust. No one can live up to it. Then he convinced Adam and Eve that it was impossible for them to obey God. And so they rebelled. I'm convinced, however, that Satan's greatest success is taking place today. Satan has convinced the Christian world, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that living the Christian life is not a joyful experience. And that it's very easy to be lost and almost impossible to be saved. Do you believe that God has the power to create from nothing? Amen. Psalm 33, 6 and 9, by the word of the Lord, for the heavens made it all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, for he spake, and it stood fast in him. Do you believe that God has the power to resurrect people from the dead? Amen. As he resurrected Jesus. Amen. Romans 6, 4, Acts 17, 30 and 31. I have wonderful news for you this morning. It is easy to be saved and almost impossible to be lost. Amen. <clears throat> because it is God that takes the initiative to draw you to Him. And if we will not resist Him taking the initiative to draw us to Him, God makes an incredible promise and a guarantee. Would you like to learn God's promise and guarantee to you if you decide to stop resisting God taking the initiative and drawing you to Him? Would you like to learn what God's promise and guarantee is? How many of you would like to find out what God's promise and guarantee is? All right? Turn for our last scripture to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Thessalonians is right after Colossians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When you get there, stay ready. And we're going to read two verses together. Are we ready? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're dealing with two things here. A promise from God and a guarantee from God. First is the promise. Verse 23. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. What does that leave out? <laughs> Nothing. And may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved complete. What does that leave out? And without blame until the coming of our Lord. That's the promise. Now the guarantee. Faithful is He. Who is He here? God. Who is calling you? Who is taking the initiative and making the promise? And He also will bring it to pass. I'm going to ask the question again. How many of you believe that God created, has the power to create everything from nothing? How many of you believe that God had the power to resurrect Jesus from the dead? How many of you believe that if you don't resist God, He has the power to remove sin from the body? How many of you believe it? It is my prayer. That each of you will take up God on His promise and His guarantee. Amen. And in so doing, cooperate with God in vindicating the great law of agape love. Mm -hmm. And prove that Satan is the one that is a liar. Amen. God bless you.
Amen. Our closing hymn is number 76. Oh Lord, they will not let me go. Do you like that title? Amen. Oh Lord, they will not let me go.